Welcome, everyone. I'm Joe Helbley. I'm the Dean of the Thayer School of Engineering, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today as we celebrate the appointment of Keith Paulson as the inaugural holder of the Robert A. Pritzker Chair in Biomedical Engineering at the Thayer School. This professorship You, thought, you better wait till you hear the talk first. I mean, <laughs> this professorship has been made possible by the generosity of Tony and Jeannie Pritzker, who we are honored to recognize and welcome here today. Let's please thank our, our generous. <laughs> Tony was an engineering sciences major at Dartmouth and has been generous to Thayer School in many ways over the years. From 1996 until 2002, he served as a member of our Board of Overseers and he continues to be a trusted and valued advisor to the school. Jeannie, with all of your family and community commitments, we're particularly pleased that you were able to join Tony and us for this event today. This new professorship at the Thayer School is named by Tony in honor of his uncle, Robert Pritzker, who was a graduate of the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago, where he too majored in engineering as an industrial engineer. Among Robert's many philanthropic activities, he established the Pritzker Institute of Biomedical Science and Engineering at IIT. So interest in biomedical engineering and the life sciences and health sciences is a long-standing uh, interest and commitment of the Pritzker family. The Robert Pritzker Professorship in Biomedical Engineering at Thayer provides support that will extend and enrich our focused effort at the interface between engineering and medicine. Keith Paulson is a leading researcher in the development of new breast imaging technologies here at Thayer. As many of you know, Keith is a graduate from Duke University with a degree in biomedical engineering. And after leaving Duke, Keith came here and earned both his master's and PhD degrees at Dartmouth at the Thayer School. After a few years at the University of Arizona on the faculty, Keith returned to Thayer School and worked initially with John Strobain and Dan Lynch on the numerical modeling of hyperthermia treatment fields, temp, sorry, temperature fields um, for treatment planning. This work ultimately evolved into de developing better imaging techniques, which then in turn led to the establishment of the current interdisciplinary cross-campus alternative breast imaging modalities project. Keith, Bayer School is proud to recognize you as the first holder of the Robert A. Pritzker Chair in the Biomedical Engineering Sciences. And I think that's worthy of another round of applause for Keith. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Well, I've gone through a range of emotions this week as I've tried to prepare for this talk. Um, on the one hand, I feel a significant responsibility to steward the Pritzker chair intellectually, and I know all of you regularly attend the Jones Seminar and are expecting to have an interesting, if not inspiring, look at some new scientific research uh, this afternoon. And I don't really want to disappoint that appetite. On the other hand, it seems uh, um, not quite right for me to just go and give my usual presentation that I might give at some scientific meeting somewhere or some other institution uh, given the um, occasion. And I've been thinking about my own career. Uh, how did I get to this point? Do I really deserve this chair? Who are the people that have influenced me? What have I learned? Hence the idea of the lessons learned. And I feel compelled and want to do that. In fact, when can you get a captive audience like this? It's like showing uh, home movies, right? <laughs> so you got a group in here. You, you think about it yourself, but now I can tell you about it and tell, tell it from my perspective. I also hope that you'll get some idea of the advances that we've made in some of the research efforts that have gone on here at Thayer, hence the advances gained part of the title. Some of you uh, will know everybody I'm going to talk about. Some of you will know, or many of you will probably know some of the people I'm going to talk about. And there may be a few of you who won't know any of the people I'm going to talk about. So if you find yourself losing concentration, uh, 
not having the personality context that I'm, and the stories that I'm going to relate to you, I encourage you to think about your own career and think about the people that have influenced you, the events that have happened, as a way of trying to stay engaged with the, the flow. I thought a good way to start would be to mention the chair's name. Because I'm sure for Tony, where's Tony? His uncle Robert was a big influence on him, a mentor, likely, an inspiration. And I thought this would be a good way to get started. I've listed a few things here that uh, Robert did. Uh, I, I can't pretend to know him. I did meet him and had dinner with him one time. And what I remember most, Tony, was he was actually he was hilarious. I thought, is, is this, does this ring true for you? He was uh, quite humorous at, at the dinner table. And uh, even though he's extremely accomplished, I found him a delightful individual. One of the things I did notice, um, and I was going to ask Tony about this, is the shareholder. Do I get free cruise trips? Does that come as part of the, part of the deal? Can I talk to Robert about that? Uh, I'm sort of hoping that would, uh, would work out. For us in academics, being in the National Academy of Engineering, that's a huge prestigious honor. Clearly, he's a distinguished businessman as well as engineer. So when I thought about the talk, one of the things I couldn't think of any lessons that I'd learned when I first sat down. And so the lesson zero is uh, don't promise to talk about any lessons learned unless you really have some to talk about. <laughs> Fortunately, I, I came out of that and uh, I do have some things to uh, tell you about. These funny figures, actually I showed these at my PhD dissertation defense and you know, that's probably not a wise thing to do. <laughs> because John Strobane was, my, was the chair of my committee. Dan Lynch was on my committee, and Charles Hutchinson was the dean of the engineering school at the time. And Hutch had a habit of always popping in on the PhD thesis uh, defenses, at least for a while. And so I had prepared this. And what I'd like to take you through is some of the work that I did as a grad student and some of the lessons that I did learn and was influenced uh, heavily, both at that time as well as in my early faculty career, by Dan and John and Hutch. So let's talk about John. This is one of my favorite photographs of John, and I don't know exactly where I got it. And those of you who remember John, remember the laugh he had? It was unbelievable, his laugh. He was always smiling, kind of a grin, some, a, a, a smile between sort of uh, a warm, engaging, and sort of a wily uh, grin. Uh, John, unfortunately, did die uh, in the winter of 07 uh, after fighting a neurodegenerative disease for a number of years. But he had a huge impact on Thayer. In fact, he started biomedical engineering at Thayer having been a radio scientist when he first came here in about 1963. Um, he became provost at Dartmouth. Um, uh, I worked under him from um, 1981 to 86, and he then went on and became provost at Duke. So some of the things that I learned from John, beyond the science, I'll call lesson one. If you want to succeed in an intellectually demanding environment, become a workaholic. John had an incredible work ethic. And he instilled that, I think, in everybody who worked with him. And as a student, you never knew. John was very shrewd in this way and a good motivator, master motivator. You never really knew where you stood with John, whether you were working hard enough or not. And so he is, was famous for his 7 a.m. meetings and so forth. And so it was, it was, a, it was a, a, a good lesson learned how to be very dedicated. And I encourage all of the students here, when you're in an environment like this, it really is a chance to excel, and you should be a workaholic. I learned to write well. John was a prolific writer, and I think that's really important in academia and almost anywhere, really any professional track. Uh, I, so my second lesson I learned, learn to write well and spend time honing your writing skills. John was a very good writer. We worked on many papers, many drafts, and I learned a lot about writing from John. Now those of you who know me and know my office, Get a, let, third lesson I have is get a heater in your office, and uh, you'll notice that uh, John had one in his office, and this was uh, one of the things that I really picked up uh, well from John to keep myself warm here at Dartmouth. But remember, I left uh, Dartmouth to go to Arizona, and uh, then I came back and said it was too hot down there, so...